Hi there! We continue to extend Hasura's capability and in this video we will have a look at Hasura actions. So what is actions in Hasura? Actions, it is a way to extend Hasura's GraphQL schema with some custom logic. Quite confusing, right? What about actions in Hasura are HTTP REST endpoints which act as a resolver? Still didn't get it. That's fine, for me it took also some time to understand. Well, let's try to visualize it with a couple of slides and I hope things will get clearer. Let's imagine that you have a single page application which calls Hasura endpoint in order to fetch some data. Until you do some basic CRUD operations, you are fine and happy, customers are happy and your manager is happy. But one day your product manager comes and says that your application should be integrated with another microservice. Let's name it account service, which handles authentication and provides user profiles and so on. But there is a the problem. This microservice doesn't support GraphQL. It has only REST interface. So you think, okay, that's fine. I will just do the call to the uh, REST endpoint directly from the application. And it is fine until you get more microservices to integrate with. Then managing of such a system becomes a mess because you have to manage different endpoints. You have to mix up GraphQL with the REST calls. Then most probably you need to have some state management like Redux for data which comes from REST, right? But then it turns out that you are using already some Apollo client which does also state management and you ultimately get two sources of truth which you have to keep in sync and it is just beginning of your problems. Hmm. Wouldn't it be great if we could add some custom schema to our Hasura? Let's say sign up mutation where we can define input values and also return type. And when we call this mutation, Hasura would delegate everything to some REST endpoint, including request input values as well. Then it calls already our account service, uh, creates a user, does necessary things and returns some result back to Hasura. And then Hasura would already deliver resolved data back to the client via GraphQL interface. And in our case it could be some token string. Sounds great, isn't it? I also think so. Well, literally it is exactly what Hasura actions are doing and in the next lesson we will see it in action. So, see you there! Hello guys! So, let's create our first action. I want to extend our Hasura with extra GraphQL mutation called create user. Then we'll create one more cloud function which will be representing our action handler. And I'm going to use Firebase Authentication which represents our account service we want to integrate. So let's get started to create our action. Let's go to the Actions tab and click Create button. Here we have to define the name for our action and input and output types. It's gonna be email, which is required string, then password, it's also required string, and display name, which is just a string. Then sample output I will rename to user, and user will have three fields. This is ID, then email and display name. So this way we created kind of contract or interface for our resolver, which we remember is REST endpoint. So we say that, hey, we will provide you data like email, password and display name. You do whatever you want with it 
but we expect that you will return us a JSON with fields ID, email and display name. Then we have to define this handler and I'm going to call again a cloud function. So I will use the same URL which I used for Hasura event, but change it to create user. And we can save our action. Now, if we go back to graphical, we can see our create user mutation. You see, you can work with it as with any normal graphical mutation, but it will fail, of course, if we try to execute it right now. Everything because there are no resolver yet. So let's go to our cloud functions and create a new one. But first of all, let's move our logic from previous lessons to some separate file. And then we just import handler functions, which I will add in on request function. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. It looks now way more better. So let's create now another file called create user. And here we will export some function called create user handler, which does nothing so far, but it just logs the request body and returns some hard coded data, which maps our return type user, which we defined earlier. And then we need to create a cloud function and assign this handler. Now we can run our cloud functions and try to trigger our action in Hasura one more time. And wow, we got the values we defined in cloud functions. So Hasura resolved it for us. So let's have a look what is inside our body. So besides session variables, Hasura sends us an input property which contains value we defined when we build the mutation. Now let's bring some logic to our function. Instead two hardcore values, let's save user in Firebase with um, custom claims, which later on will be used for authentication and return then a user we created. So first of all, let's import some functions from Firebase admin package. These functions will allow us to create and manage users. Then I want to extract email, password and display name, which Hasura delegates to this function. Then after this, I can create a user in Firebase by passing object with email, password and display name. Now having user created, I have to set up custom claims, which I have mentioned will be used later for authentication. And in that section, I will explain it more detailed. And if custom claims were added successfully, we should respond with real data instead of hard coded one. So I replace it here and that's it. We can restart our functions and try to add a new user. I go back to Hasura console, then add some real email, password and display name, and then I execute it. So now we can see that user was successfully created and we work with it as with normal GraphQL mutation. However, we know that behind the scene, it is just a rest endpoint. Okay, that was it. And let's move on and see you in the next lesson.